going on, America? Let's talk about how do you get power? What is power? Power is when you speak, people listen. Power is when you want to get things done, they get done. Power is people shake when they hear your name. So how do we get this power? Whereas right now, we've got 14, 15 days of protesting, rioting, and this is facilitating change. This is people coming together in mass and exercising their power. And it's starting to get some things done. But do you think these things would have happened if people haven't tore up stuff and caused all this economic damage? Because you saw the craziest things, police departments defunding their police departments. Uh, you saw people facilitating change, people, all this stuff happened because of violence. And there is physical violence and there is economic violence. You wanna be in the position where you can cause economic violence. And how does one get to be an economic terrorist? You become a business owner, baby. This is the game, this changes everything. This makes the moves, this opens up the doors, this I'm here to tell you, I'm going to give you a few blueprints to how to get power and also talk about some folks who tried to check me but because they didn't have no power, they got checked. How about that? Catch me outside. If this is your first time here, what I want you to do is to go below and enroll in 30 days to 2500. It is the side hustle, how to build a business course and also get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. This is another course to help you strengthen your mindset. Now, here's something. Let's go ahead and talk about my time here on YouTube. I started here in 2009. And around, you know, it was all fun and well in 2009 because it was a brand new YouTube channel. No one knew who I was. 2010, and about 2011, I started to build a name for myself. And some people were not happy about that. All these people stopped doing YouTube years ago because they couldn't hack it. Very interesting. And they came for me because they didn't like the things I was saying. And this is something that's very common with YouTube today because you will hear many YouTubers, I ain't trying to sell you nothing. And they're literally shooting themselves in the foot because they are afraid to sell. They're afraid to create a product. They're afraid to represent, but we're not even gonna talk about that in this video. But they came for me and because I had economic power, because you know, at one point, I will admit it got so bad, I was thinking about quitting YouTube because these folks were creating fake YouTube channels to harass people who were leaving positive comments. They were having four hour hangouts. I mean, they were going hard. They were working overtime. But I, I took the Ben Franklin uh, graph method, essentially you draw a T on a sheet of paper and you write the pros and cons. And I wrote all the pros, money, I was doing well, I was helping people, I was creating products. And the cons was these fools. I only had one con. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna keep doing YouTube. So I need to fight back. So what I did is I sued people. I actually found the address of one of the, of actually two of the people and I went to there, because when you sue someone, you have to sue in their local jurisdiction. And it's really easy to do, because you can get all the paperwork and stuff you need over the internet, file it, have, you know, have a courier service file it, and I had them file it, and I had them served. And they got shook. They had a four hour hangout talking about me, and they took it down. Why'd they take it down? Because, see, it was all fun and games as long as they were just talking about me and they didn't do anything. But when I started to do things like that, the game changed. Oh man, it was like, and this one, one of these dudes, his wife, she actually emailed me and she was like, please don't sue us, don't do this. You know, my husband, I'm thinking about divorcing him. She went off on this fool because she did not know he was playing around on the internet doing these things when he was supposed to be the husband, the provider, and so on and so forth. And she was like just begging me not to do it because I was going for him. Because essentially, you could sue someone, and essentially what would have happened is, and th this is one of the things that you, you gotta be educated on the law, that if you incur expenses to sue them, 
you can put those expenses in the lawsuit. So because they have placed this burden upon you and this harassment and all of a sudden those two opted out of the game. They stopped. They stopped participating in the hangouts because it, you know, it got real. You know, it was where the rubber meets the road. So that was like really like satisfying because I was like, oh, OK, that got rid of them. And then I began to read up on the YouTube law and I got YouTube channels deleted for impersonation. And then I started to strike back and I learned something. I learned the art of dissing someone in the video without never mentioning their name, but make it apparent who they were. And that got them because I started going after them. I started throwing Molotov you know, digital Molotov cocktails started talking crap about them. And then the tide turned. So why am I talking about this? The only rights that you have are the rights that you can enforce. If you can't enforce these rights, they're not really rights. So I started to enforce my rights because I was making so much money. I had a lot of free time to read up on law and figure out how to sue people, figure out how to get back at people. And this is what changed it. Because if you noticed, none of those folks come in on my channel. They're not around. No one's ever talking. You, 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 don't, you don't really see them because they're gone. Because I had a scorched earth policy. And this little story is how I enacted my power. See, power makes folks shake because I was a kid and they used to say, if a bully ever hits you, pick up a rock and go upside his head. And that would make him and the rest of the bullies stand down. And it's true because bullies, digital bullies, people who want to talk junk, folks who want to come after you are usually cowards. And at the first sign of resistance, they fold. But the kind of power that I'm talking about is economic power. It's a rap song. You get the money, then you get the power. There is no power without economic benefit. And this is why these protests and these riots were so effective because they were creating economic chaos. And they was like, look, we gotta do something. We gotta stop this. We gotta tamp this down because the damage is getting to be really, really bad. And this is why you want to have power in your life. For my dudes, you know, when I was going hard on disruptive mail, because, you know, uh, I think Savage Finance is taking a priority over disruptive mail. So I'm, I'm not really posting a lot of videos there. But what was the first mandate? Get your economics together. Because as a man, once you get your economics together, your dating base expands dramatically. It just does. And a lot of the dudes don't want this because like, you know, I know my mid toe and my red pill, red pill men. This is an example of a lack of power. Let me say this again. Red pill, red pill men and mid toe men is an example of a lack of power to declare that I'm not going to deal with women. Big whoop. The women didn't really care. You didn't hurt nobody because you had no power. But when I'll give you an example of power. NBA players, NFL players, and other stars who, quote, marry outside of the race. Why is that such a thing? Because they have power. Like, I choose you. I don't choose you. And a lot of people up in their feelings about the choices of literally a handful of men. There's only like, when you add up all of the NBA players, all of the NFL players, all of the Major League ba ma Baseball players, we're talking about maybe 6,000 dudes. And if you wanted to go further and add up all of the rappers and movie stars, we're talking about 10,000 men on the planet out of billions, 10,000 men. But see, when you have power, people recognize when you make moves. And the only way for the average person to get power, well, there's a couple of ways. First of all, there's political power where you can start running for office at your local level and become the mayor, government, councilman, whatever they call. You can acquire some power that way. And this is one of the biggest issues that happens with people who get into politics who are broke. They submit to scams or bribes. And next thing you know, they up on charges and they're doing 
in time like Kwame Kilpatrick because they never had any money. They had power, but they didn't have any money. And it, you want to have money and power simultaneously. You just don't want to have power because you know that like, remember the house of cards with uh, Kevin Spacey and he was extremely powerful, but one of his people left him for the money. Cause you know, he had the power, but he didn't have the money and power without money can be very, very frustrating. So it is best to have both money and actually you want to get the money first. And why do you want to get the money first? Because the money is going to acclimate you to your new situation. Because one of the reasons that so many people are poor is they have no template, no blueprint. They don't know what it's like to have money. And this is why poor people who win the lottery often go broke or file bankruptcy because they don't know what to do with the money. So having money and becoming comfortable with having money is a journey into itself. And then once you do that, then you get the power because money is a lever and the bigger the lever, the more stuff you can move. And the people who are really skilled, because, you know, I haven't looked into the George Soros thing because, you know, I keep hearing about George Soros and the NAFTA and I've not read up on it, so I'm not really educated on it. But George Soros has he has a lot of money and how you spend your money. And this is something that I'm about to say that a lot of people are not going to like. You got to buy your politicians. The politicians are going to have the interest of people who have bought them. These are people who have contributed to their campaigns. These are people who contribute to lobbyists. You got to buy your politicians. And this is what the greater masses doesn't understand. And this is why we're getting the policies that we're getting. Right now, America needs a second stimulus check. And what did Trump do? He put out these fake job numbers, to, which gave the GOP, GOP more Senate more like, well, you know, the job report's better than what we thought it was. So let's just wait on, wait, wait until July. Let's, let's take a wait and see, ex, ex, uh, wait and see approach. Let's not help the people out because of these fake ass job numbers. Who do you think now, who, who let's, let's go ahead and look at the American people, some American people, because there are many people who still have not gotten their stimulus check. American people got $1,200. Okay. And they got enhanced unemployment benefits, which run out next month. Okay. So those are the two things that America got. Oh, and they got forbearance and they got that. What did these corporations who contribute to their campaigns and have lobbyists, they got billions. So American people, the greater, larger number of people got $1,200 stimulus check And these corporations got billions. The fed, excuse me, these corporations got trillions because when you count the money that the fed has been pumping into the stock market and buying all of these assets, so you as an American have no power because you have no money. And because you have no money, no one's paying attention to you unless you get together and go out and tear up a bunch of stuff. You get your power through violence. Well, I suggest a better path, economic violence, because when you have the power, I'm going to tell you a little story and it, 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 it's a good story. So listen up. My last job, there was a white female who was racist and she was our admin person. She assembled the packages. She ordered the furniture and everything. It got to the point where the owner of the company had to have a word with her. She was racist, no doubt about it. And like me, I don't really care about racists because racists are not going to knock me off my block. They ain't going to knock me off my game. If anything, I'm going to work harder to make more money so they'll be even madder. I love making racist people mad by being a high performer. I love making racists mad by dating better women than they can. I love that. So the more you hate on me, the more I'm going to clown. I'm going to put on the nose. I'm going to put on the hair. I'm going to put on the makeup. I'm going to put on the shoes. I'm going to put on the suit and I'm going to clown. 
I'm going to make you so mad. I'm going to make you just so angry because that's fun. And that's a power move when you can elevate your game to the point where you make the people who hate you hate you even more because they can't stand how well you're living. I forget someone said this in a live stream, but it's like some people hate on you because of the way that other people love on you. I thought that was really, really powerful because that dealt with my at the time pest who's been kind of quiet lately. Thank God. Well, he's been blocked, so I don't even know if he's been doing anything, but she was racist and I didn't really care. I was like, whatever, as long as you do your job, make me this money. We cool. I don't care. You can keep your little racist ass attitude at home. I don't really care. And at this point, after my journey, where well, I started my first business while I had a job, which I recommend that you do. Don't quit your job. Start your business while you have a job. One morning, I wake up and I get an email from this person who is racist, who is white, and she's sending me her resume because she needs a job. Did y'all hear what I said? She sent me her resume. I was so surprised that I called my boy Mario and I explained what happened. He's like, really? We were all sitting around. We were just amazed. See, this is one of the things when you get power and one of the greatest powers that you can have is the ability to give someone a job, the ability to give someone money in exchange for their time and service. It's one of the greatest powers you can have. It's like a superpower you can have. And this person was willing to put aside their racism for economic benefit. This is how you handle racism. You get the money, you get the power. Because I will tell you, I have worked with racists. I got another little story for you. When I was a storage auction dude, I, it took me a minute to learn the game because fortunately I didn't go out there with no money. So I was able to play the money games, but once I started, I learned the secret formula on how to buy storage units. You know, it's in my book, Making Money A to Z with Self-Storage Unit Auctions. I began to understand economic violence and economic power. Because if you don't know anything about storage auctions, essentially what we would do is we would go to these storage facilities. There would be a storage manager. They would cut the lock, raise the door, and we would bid on the contents of the room. And the bidding was with real money. You were competing with real dollars against other folks who were bidding against you. And this is competition at its finest. This is pure capitalism. And I competed in that arena day in and day out for years. And once I learned the game, I started to mess with people. Cause see, if you would like bid me up, cause see there, there was like, there was certain categories. There were people who sold at the flea market. There were people who owned shops. There were part-time people. There were all kinds of people out there, but typically the people who owned stores were able to spend more money because they made more money. And then once I, I peeped that out and I said, okay. And then I noticed something really strange one day that the same people kept spending outrageous sums of money. It's like, huh, that's interesting. They keep doing it. They do it month after month after month after month. And then I began to notice what they were buying and I began to model their behavior and I began to get similar success. Then I began to pay back people. See, there's something that's called running someone up. Essentially you're bidding on a unit that you really don't want to make your competitor exhaust their cash. And I got really, really good at this strategy. I got real good at it because I was a different kind of cat because I did not just come out there with money and higher intellect. I came out there with esoteric knowledge. I'm very good at reading body language. So I would sit there and I would bid up. And sometimes like this one dude, when he was bidding, he would rock. And one day I started mirroring his rock and I got in front of him. I was bidding. Yeah. 100, 150, 200 rocking with him, right? So I was in rhythm with this dude and he didn't know what I was doing. And then I stopped rocking and I popped off because I could tell by his body language, he was almost done. 
and I would hop off and I heard him curse under his breath because I made him sp and see and this is this is a game that you would figure out how much money people have because you know part of the store structuring game is I would have five thousand dollars in one pocket and I have five thousand dollars in another pocket why would I have this money so I could spend five thousand dollars on regular units and in case something super fragile casualistic came up something nice I had reserve funds a lot of people didn't operate like that and once they exhausted their cash because you would tell in the morning the auction crowd would be really heavy and as the day went on as people spent money they would drop off and I started to pay attention to all this so I know this kind of guy I know his pockets he's got about 2,500 this cat's got about 3,000 this guy's got about 5,000 and that, this is I approached the game very analytically and then people who were playing with me in the beginning I started to punish them back toward once I got this knowledge, once I got the money, and I became very vindictive. Like if you bid on me, and if it was a type of unit you didn't buy, normally buy because it wasn't your purview, I would dog you for months. Because remember, I knew body language. I could read people. And people were just like, how does he do that? And Because I remember this one, she's like, God dang it, I was about, how do you do this? She got, she just like, how do you do this? I was like, how do I do what? I was about to get off and you jumped off. She was hot. She was mad. Remember, I like making people angry. I like it. It's fun. And she was like, I was like, and then it got to the point where my reputation was so rough that people was like, you don't want to start messing with him because he will dog you for months. Because literally. And then I started going up against the big dogs, the Sam Yangs, the, the, the Snowballs, the Clampets, and fighting economically. So I know what it's like to fight with money. That's what I'm talking about. Because once you learn the art of fighting with money and the pure competition, you become really powerful and you become a scary, scary person to deal with. Because one of the things that people don't understand is when you have the ability to make your competitors spend money they don't want to spend, I'm, I'm telling you, one of the things that would happen is I would get really good deals toward the end of the day because it was like clockwork. Because one of the things that would happen is I would get, you know, I would, in the morning, you know, there would, I would buy some stuff and then the things would become proportionally cheaper. And one of the things that I saw that like end of the day, like I got a unit that in the morning that would have cost me like 1500 bucks, I got it for 300 bucks because people had exhausted their cash. Once again, understand the competition fighting with people and understanding what's going down from an economic standpoint is how you get power. And I rose to power, I had my two warehouses and I was a formidable person because I learned the art of competition. When they came for me, I did not run. And this is how you get power. And this is how you create a greater legacy for yourself. And this is how you do certain things for you to build your economic legacy. So understand these lessons I give you are real world lessons come from dealing with real world situations and you want to get power and to get power, you're going to need money. You're going to need money and you're going to need the proper attitude because at times you're going to have to go to war. And a lot of people don't like war because war is messy, it's bloody. I remember it was the Saturday auction. It was a U-Haul auction and there was Sam Yang. He used to come out to this and the, the uh, guy who held the auction says, you're the only one that bid against him. And a lot of people did not understand that that's how the game was played. And I made Sam spend so much money on a bedroom set that had cracked marble uh, side tables and a cracked marble dresser that he stopped messing with me. Because see, if you don't have the ability to enforce your rights, you have no rights. This is how the game goes. So what you want to do is go ahead and get yourself some power. You want to get your economic power together and you want to build your network and you want to build up your money because that's the only way, that's the only way you're going to win in America going forward. That is the game. That's how it goes down. 
this is how it's going to be. And I'm here to tell you the people with the money have the power and they're buying even more power during these economic times because everything's on sale. Everything's cheap. Everything's going down. So this is a lesson. And I want you to watch this video three or four times on how to get power because I came from a situation where I had no money, had no skills and I had no power to go into that. And it was a, it was a system of development. So with that go below, get 30 days to 2,500, go below, get the hustlers mindset, pimping your mind for success. And if you're in this situation, go ahead. And so you can be present at my, my next live webinar, the how to make money from scratch, where I will get into how to retrain yourself for better habits. That's going to be the next webinar and that's probably going to happen this week. So with that, I will see you guys later and check out this next video.